in Kiswahili we say heshima sio utumwa direct translation in english it implies being respectful it's not a burden another wise man say that respect is earned for you to be a respectable person you've got to be respecting other people you've got to be doing things that are honorable for people to give you that respect in return and being respectful doesn't necessarily have to be by leaders it cuts across from the junior employee to the ceo of an organization everybody has to be respectful so today's video is all about how do we earn respect at the corporate workplace hi guys and happy labor day i'm creating this content on monday so i hope you've rested enough and you've heard what the president has said on matters regarding a new NHIF deduction. I don't know where we are going to head with this small salary of ours, considering even the food prices have increased. Now there is an, an NSSF deduction that was introduced earlier this year. And now there are discussions around increasing the amount you are deducted on NHIF. Anyway, that is not what the video is all about. Welcome back to this amazing channel. My name is Lady Jenster, in case you're new here. Please join this family by subscribing. And if you like my content, give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure you share and you press the notification bell so that anytime I upload a new video, you get to be notified real time. Every Wednesday at 1 p.m., I premiere career videos. So if you are an employee, then definitely this channel is your home. We've got to be better colleagues. We've got to be better employers. And that is what I'm passionate about doing in this season of my life. So welcome back, sit, relax. We talk about respect at the office. As an employed person, you know that nothing comes for free. You've got to do your work so that your employer can pay you. You've got to be respectable and to respect others so that other people can also respect you. So one of the ways of earning respect from your bosses, from your employer, or even you as a leader, earning respect from the people you're leading, requires you to be very diligent at your work. You have to know what it is you're doing. You've got to master your craft so well. You've got to have the relevant skills. You have to perform beyond expectations. If there are any targets that are set for you, you've got to achieve them. And in any case, you're supposed to surpass the targets. If you have a job that has a deadline, then make sure you've delivered before the due date and it has no errors. It is very accurate. You have to understand what it is that you're doing, the kind of service you're offering to your customers. Uh, you cannot be the kind of a person who has to keep on being reminded that do you know that 15 is approaching and we are supposed to file our VAT. We are supposed to file our pay returns. We are supposed to pay NHIF and NSSF for employees. So someone who has to keep on being reminded to do her work or other people who do shoddy jobs will be disrespected because they are not reliable at all. And they do not seem to understand what their role entails. So you've got to be so, so good in that job that you're doing. Be the master of it. And be as someone who can be relied upon because it is known if you give Jenstar this kind of a job, she will not only deliver, but she's going to add more value over and above what you expect out of her. So people will respect you and will see you as an employee of high regard. And if you are a boss, ensure that you give work in good time. Otherwise, if you are the people who come and give work at 2 p.m. and it is very urgent, by 3 p.m. you want it, your employees may lack respect for you because you are not an organized person. You are not very diligent at your work. Another way that people are going to respect you is through adhering to the company policies. 
And one of the company policies could be 10 keeping. You're supposed to log in at 7 a.m. and log out at 4 p.m. or at 6 p.m. or at 7 p.m. depending with your employer. So by 7 a.m. you're supposed to be settled. Similarly, by 4 p.m. you're supposed to be logging out. So if you're the kind of a person who will come in at 7 15 7 30 they'll disappear for two hours then they come back they sometimes leave before time people will lack the respect required for you and also if there are set uh, rules on dress code uh, most corporate offices require people to dress official Unless you're working in an NGO or you're a casual employee. And nowadays, most casual employees have uniforms. If you are a soldier, if you are a cleaner, you have uniforms that are rebel. So, adhere to the dress code of your organization. You're not supposed to come in ragged in the office. And for some ladies, you know, you wear very short dresses. Dresses that are suggestive. Someone may even wonder, is this lady going to an office or they are going for a party or they are going for a date? In fact, they say that dress according to the way you want to be addressed. So if you want to be addressed with respect, then dress in a respectable manner. Uh, furthermore, we have other rules and regulations regarding ethic, ethical practices in the office. Uh, do not be grabbing company's property or even company's time if you expect people to respect you. Uh, maybe you are the HR in this organization. You've got to lead by example because you cannot be telling us to dress appropriately, to dress in dresses that are not uh, above our knees or dresses that are not showing too much cleavage. And you expect us to take your instructions as the employee if at all you yourself you're doing the opposite. You will think these employees do not respect my position as the HR. However, you're not leading by example. That is not disrespect. You've got to, your actions and what you speak have to be in line. Also, if you are a boss, and uh, you expect work to be done in a particular procedure or there is a particular compliance that needs to be adhered to, you have to adhere to it. We've had instances where people will be like, well, you don't you know that that rule is only in the books? Our manager doesn't adhere to that. On one occasion or the other, he has bent this rule. So when it comes to the employee's turn, you will not say, I've been saying this and this. It is actually written. It is disrespect to do the opposite. Yet, you've been doing the opposite yourself. So, if you have to be respected, lead by example. A employee is up to date on current affairs that are affecting his or her industry. Just to give an example, you cannot be a teacher and you know nothing about the National Union of Teachers strike or the bus accident that had four children die as they were going home for holidays. Or fail to know that a particular university is currently on strike and they've been on strike since January. Because if your children come to consult you when you are a secondary school teacher on the importance of going to the university or what is expected and you don't know, then they lack respect for you because you don't understand what it is that you are doing. Another example could be example of people who work in the banking industry. You ask someone, what is the current CBK interest rate on loans? What is the capping rate? You don't know. What is the current exchange rate for dollars to Kenya shillings? Or why is the rate of dollars, I don't know whether I'm saying the L's and R's correctly. So you don't know the, do the dollar is low because we have 
maybe the war in Ethiopia or the war in Sudan or the Ukraine and Russia war is affecting the dollar exchange rate. Or uh, probably you are not even aware that banks have currently introduced a charge whenever you look at your bank balance or you send someone money, then it sends you back a confirmation message. It is charging 2.2 shillings. You are a banker and you don't know that information. A lot of people are asking that information and you seem not to know. We will lack respect for you because you don't seem to understand what you do. If you have to be respected, then you have to be up to date. Especially with matters affecting your specific industry. You've got to know, I work in an IT firm or in a mobile network firm. Like, I like using Safaricom because it is common or we can use Airtel. You need to know their first quarter performance. Did they perform at a profit or at a loss? Someone who doesn't know information about the company they are working in or the rate that they are in when these reports that are normally given by Forbes, for example, of the best paying employer, the best improved or the best company technologically advanced organization, this information has to be in your hands. Be so knowledgeable about the current trends in your industry because it affects how the market is performing, it affects how your customers are perceiving you, it will also influence the purchasing power of the people you are expecting to buy your products or to buy your services. I will emphasize more and more. Be up to date with everything that is affecting the nation and might have an... Maybe you work in an insurance company. You don't know that currently in Kenya we have the Mandamano Mondays, okay. Or Tuesdays. I hear tomorrow it's going to be happening. So it is on a Tuesday. You know this one, riot and strike has this effect. People are not opening businesses. Or people's businesses will be burnt down and as an insurance company, we will be forced to pay. It is at this point you are supposed to recommend the political violence and terrorism cover to your customers. In whatever industry you are in, you have to be relevant. You've got to be up to date on what is happening locally, internationally or worldwide and it may have an impact on the performance of your organization. This doesn't have to be for the owners, the directors and the shareholders. It is for everyone, regardless of your position or status in the organization. For you to be respected by everyone, you've got to respect others and treat them in equal measures. You cannot be saying, hi, hi, you look so nice, you look so good today, I like your hair, I like your, I like the way you do your job to the CEO. But when it comes to the cleaner in that office or in the washroom, you are so arrogant, you are very rude, you demean them, you talk, you may not even greet them because they are not at your level, maybe financially or academically. You know, they don't hold degrees and you are a degree holder. So you cannot respect them. You will see someone is washing. Then you go stepping with mud because you don't care. What can they do to you? But when it comes to that person you need to impress, your boss or the, um, the main employer, the director of your organization, you humble yourself. But the moment you are getting out of the door, you are very loud, you are, you, you look like a drunkard. It would actually be very difficult for you to tell this is a jester in the office and this is jester in the same office but now at a different station in the washroom. Or you go and identify places all over, you shred papers and leave them because you do not respect or appreciate the work that junior person is doing. Respect everyone. 
Treat that driver. Treat the delivery guy. Treat the male person. Treat the tea lady. With the same kind of respect, you're going to treat the general manager, your team leaders, and any other boss or even employees who you are in the same rank. Remember, respect is earned. You don't just get it. You have to give it for people to respect you back. And it doesn't draw a cut line that you have to be respected by the CEO. That is the only thing that counts. Life is diverse. It cuts across the CEO. It cuts across them. That do the guy who you carries you and you think like you're supposed to pay him peanuts because they are desperate for your 50 shillings. And even as you pay, you pay with Madarao. An employee of respect knows and understands that they're supposed to praise more and complain less. The job may not be satisfying. But the fact that every other day you wake up coming to work so that you get paid means you really need this job. So it doesn't add any value to keep complaining about that mouthy colleague, that boss of yours who doesn't seem to appreciate you at all, the way your employer is underpaying you, the way that working condition is harsh, if you feel you cannot take it up anymore, then resign. Do not come complaining to good employees who want to work so that they get paid. And no employer is perfect. You will have to choose your battles. You will know, may have to live with this struggle. I have to work for 15 hours a day, although the normal working hours as per the labor laws are 8 hours and most recommended from 8 to 5, but here we work from 6 a.m. and sometimes up to 9 up to 10 p.m. We don't even have time for our families. So you keep complaining there's too much work, there's too much overload, you are fatigued. Yet we don't see you taking your leave days. Learn to appreciate. Show gratitude. Thank your employer for giving you the opportunity. You're even complaining because of some conditions when there are people who are jobless they will desperately admire to be in that position god has put you in so do not be a complainer avoid small talks avoid gossips don't stay in places where people are about mouthing your boss saying you know he's even shapeless Look at that woman who speaks a lot and her wigs are always looking dirty. I don't even admire her hairstyles. How does that one prevent you from doing your job? We would respect someone who is like, okay, that one is personal. You deal with it, I'll, I'm learning how to cope with it. Or, yes, I understand there is this struggle I'm also not satisfied, but at the moment, because this job can pay my bills, I just thank God for it. Complain to yourself, not to your colleagues. Don't gossip, especially negative gossip. Okay, we have some uh, good gossips, especially where grapevine is involved. In fact, if you don't engage in those grapevines, you, you may be fired without even knowing because you didn't see the signs coming. You are not close to people. So you have to be very keen on the words that come out of your mouth. Let them be polite. Let them be kind. Let them be respectful. And let them be words that you will not be ashamed of saying them in a boardroom if you are called to, to be answerable to something. Influence people positively. When new employees come to the organization, stop telling them about bad things of the organization. They'll even hate you. When they come to realize it was something they could cope with. And on that note, let me speak about being a team player. People respect someone they know. Uh, we can count on her because she will come through. When you have too much work to do and she's free, she can help us. If we call her to work beyond the normal hours, even without overtime, we will know she's going to stick around. She's not the type that uh, don't care attitudes, whether the job is complete or it's not complete. Me, my time is up to five and I have to go. You cannot give me extra work. 
Work that is not in my job description is a no-go zone. We don't respect such kind of employees. People want someone who is also ready to learn, someone who is teachable, someone who is ready to take up more responsibilities, especially for the upcoming young people or the millennials who are going to be leaders in the future. Be a person who can be respected. Someone who people can fight for you, even in your absence. They can say, uh, Jean is it yesterday and today, but normally she doesn't get late. By 5.20, she's usually in the office. So do not punish her because of these two, three days she has missed to come for a job. She must be going through something. But if you are a reckless, disrespectful employee who will not even alert the boss when they know they are getting late, or maybe you're going for an early lunch or late lunch and you've got some pending work and you just disappear from the office, nobody is going to respect you. And it is feels so bad to feel like People don't respect me. Hmm? You are like, Mona hani heshimu. Kwanye hani heshimu. Lakini we mwenyewe umejiheshimu. Jiheshimu kwanza. Dio watu wengine pia. Wakaweza kufanya nini kukuheshimu. Eh, like Swahili in me. Eh, 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 we. Hmm? A respectable employees. Honors the authority. It is even written. In the Bible and in another book called 40 Rules of Power. Do not outshine your master. You are not the boss. So why do you want to challenge the authority? Honor the instructions they give. Accept corrections. Be a teachable person. Act like a junior. And this is also two way. You have to honor your servant. As your boss, don't be bossy because people have to follow the commands and instructions you give to them. People at times get tired and the moment they start disrespecting you, they'll be like, our boss, Mr. Mr. Who now? Mr. Abdallah. Abdallah is just an example. There is no one being quoted here. We are used to him speaking. It will enter through this year and live through this other year the moment we leave that departmental meeting. Because we've been speaking, 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 but he doesn't seem to listen to us. So if you do not listen to your juniors, why should they also listen to? And if you are a junior who doesn't listen to the boss, they will lack respect for you. Because... And they, uh, the boss is always supposed to be respected. If you disagree with him, then get a proper way of addressing your concerns. Not maybe shaming your boss in public or trying to challenge his decision. When he tells you this, you are just argue and argue you don't want to follow. It doesn't work like that in the corporate world. You may be smarter, you may be more educated than your boss. But he is the boss. So don't act like you're competing with him. Don't act like you are intimidating him and he's the, your leader. Respect him enough as per his position being your master. And this does not only apply to offices. It also applies in churches where you have to obey your bishops. Okay. With knowledge, of course, do not be brainwashed by things like the ones we are watching on news about Shakahola and uh, I don't know Mackenzie or what they are calling him. In your houses, respect the authority. Who is the head of the home? In Is it your mother? Is it your father? Honor them. The way you would want to be treated if you are put in a particular position, treat others the same same way and i'm a respectable employee and even as you can see me i'm a respectable person <laughs> but if i don't place myself who will i try as much as possible i'm also employed and i'm an employer i try to balance i respect my employees and i also respect my employer because i expect 
that in return how will you not respect me and i'm respecting you i've come to the end of this video i really appreciate those of you who take your time to watch my content may god bless you abundantly please subscribe let me know what you think about respect in the offices so until next time it's been fun enjoy watching the video as i enjoyed creating it Adiós.